Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're doing a little bit of this or that. We have two Patek Philippe 5035s. If you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to this channel and by all means click on the card in the upper right hand corner of this screen to go to our Patek Philippe sales page to see both of these watches for sale with accessories, boxes, papers, and photos. Now we're doing a this or that because we have two watches that are very similar in almost every respect. 5035s from the first generation of Patek Philippe annual calendar company applications launched in early 1997, first announced in 2006 at Basel World. The 5035 was the debut not just of that complication for Patek, but of the annual calendar for the entire industry as it was unprecedented when Patek launched it. Now you can see both watches precious metal, both watches Roman numerals, both watches 37 millimeter annual calendars with identical caliber 315 slash 198 automatic movements. So let's do a quick set of wrist checks and talk about the differences. Now you can see right here, and I'm gonna focus this so that you can see the nuances of this gorgeous dial and case. This is the 5035G, white gold. You'll note the case is remarkably sensuous. Now in terms of dimensions, uh, the watch is 37 millimeters across the round of the case. It's 11 millimeters thick with a generously sloped case flank, no problem with dress cuffs. Lug to lug, the watch measures a very reasonable 44 millimeters. If you can wear a 36 millimeter Rolex Datejust, you can definitely wear this. My wrist is 16 centimeters for reference. You'll note the concave bezel that pairs the visual mass of the watch, which has a rather tubby aspect ratio given its absolute span in relation to its thickness, but it is incredibly sensuous. First, because there isn't a single straight line short of the dead-on profile shot of the bezel knuckle where it abuts the case, and because it's entirely polished. It simply glows. Now, the watches have matching light brown alligator leather straps with a gloss finish. So you can see that the determining factor in choosing which one of these is ultimately for you will be the combination of case, rose gold and cream in the case of this 5035R, white gold and black in the case of the 5035G. Now my choice would be the white metal and the black dial, strictly because I feel like it has more power to it. Perhaps not as elegant as the rose gold with the cream dial, it feels like the New York watch for the New Yorker that I am at heart. Now the nice thing about both both dials is that they feature abundant luminescent applications. So although they are dress watches par excellence, they are nevertheless more useful in low or no light than a typical formal watch. Now the watches are 37 millimeters, but they have outsized presence. As Patek Philippe complications, they'll never be mistaken for anything else. And I'm going to turn over the 5035G to give you a better look at the automatic winding caliber 315-198. Unidirectional winding, 40 to 45 hour power reserve. The 5035 was built between 1997 and it was discontinued in 2005, so the Patek Philippe seal arrived in 2009. All of these will feature movements blazing with the traditional Pont Saint de Genève, and you can see the stamp right under my thumb on the bridge. You'll also note the traditional Gyromax style balance assembly and because it's the caliber 315 and not the 324 that succeeded it, it beats away at 21,600 vibrations per hour, not 28.8. Now, the Gyromax style balance allows the watch to take a very precise regulation and hold it better in the face of bumps and vibration over time. Single mainspring barrel, it feels creamy and wonderful to wind it. It's a tactile pleasure in terms of Automatic winding, you can see this is pre-ceramic bearings, unidirectional winding, very efficient. The actual application of finish on these watches is uniformly excellent. You can see on the 5035R, linear Cote de Genève across the bridges, a tight and even perlage engine turning on the base plate. There's circular Cote de Genève on the winding mass with an engraved Calatrava cross logo, redolent of Patek Philippe. Now you will note that the watch features beautifully polished screw heads with chamfered slots and the edge of every bridge absolutely explodes in direct light because the anglage is mirrored, hand applied and rounded, not laid down with machine as is so common even in the high horology realm these days. Now you will notice a few differences on this, these two. Note the reversing wheel of the winding system on the R is bare brass whereas it is actually plated and 
there is a perlage application on the same reversing wheel on the 5035G. You'll also note when I clear the bridges that there is actually more text describing the adjustment in positions and a temperature on the 5035G than you'll find on the mechanically identical 5035R. No less precisely adjusted nor did they neglect different temperatures. It's just a different finish and different approach to scripting graphics on the bridge. One might argue this is the minimalist traditionalist approach and this is the technophiles approach that has taken hold at Patek Philippe ever since, not just on movements but also on dials. Both of these watches are absolutely spectacular timepieces. As I mentioned earlier, they're the kind of timepieces that wear well on smaller wrists. So if you want a little giant of a complication that's historically important, you can't go wrong with these watches. At the same time, if you have a big wrist and you're wondering if 37 is going to work, keep in mind that these are heavyweight 37s. Patek Philippe annual calendars bow to no one. And just because there are oversized, overblown, and overwrought sports watches that dwarf these doesn't mean they have more character, charisma, or substance. This is where it's at. See them both on our website.